Johnny uh, Crabbin reminds me of, of Stone Crabbin with Daddy more right. than anything. And uh, I got bit by one one time. And I said, Daddy, that thing bit me, bit me. You know what the man told me? The old man, the old pioneer, like he said, What did he say? Find him back. Find him back. So I guess he expected to go up and grab the next thing like that. I bit his ass back. Just to show him, you know? <laughs> Jim Weeks from Weeks Fish Camp. This is my brother Johnny. John Weeks. I'm your brother Jimmy. Oh, and this is my brother Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> from Weeks Fish Camp. There you go. Um, we're one of the pioneer families in Bonita Springs. I've opened a fish market here in town to um, share history about Bonita Springs and our family history, how it's entwined with uh, Bonita Springs, which a lot of people well know that it is. And uh, I really appreciate that someone's interested in the recording this and hearing our story. From my understanding, our great-great-grandfather Rigdon Weeks mm -hmm. came from, uh, lived in Ponte Gorda in uh, 1919, I think he came down to Ponte Gorda from Carolina. My granddad always be proud to be from Carolina. Um, and he met Mamie Weeks, Mary Hall Weeks, in Estero. They were both lived in Estero for a little while. Rigdon Weeks had several children. One of them was our grandfather, Drain Weeks. And it goes, story is that he bought 50 acres off of Coconut Road, north of Bonita, where Spring Creek is now. And back in them days, there was a lot of Indian mounds around. And there was one Indian mound in there they called Chauncey Hill. And a lot of pioneers would build on them Indian mounds because they set up much higher than the rest of the property around. And they would fight off mosquitoes and the floods and stuff. Right. Well, that was in the 1920s, best I could figure that, Johnny. Mm -hmm. Then granddaddy, happened to buy Weeks Fish Camp in the early 30s, which would make sense. He only went one side of Coconut Road to right. start his settlement. Just about a mile down the road? About a mile down the road, just on north at the very end of mm -hmm. it. And um, Granddaddy started his settlement. And they started on Indian Mound, and, and, I, just, and I know that uh, there was uh, nine children, right? There, was, uh, there would be uh, Marietta, Marietta, yeah. Marietta, Howard, and Daddy. That's yep, the first Franklin. three, Franklin Weeks. And them three was actually born at Weeks Fish Camp, not no hospital. Right. They were actually born at Weeks Fish Camp. Then came Daisy, Charles, Larry, and Danny Weeks. And Danny. Is there any more? I can think. I can think. You think you should have those with Betty Lou. Betty Lou. Betty Lou, Betty Lou Weeks. Right. We were not only about fishing. Daddy wanted to experiment and, and try to go into farming. He didn't want none of us to fish because he knew it was a hard living with exactly. the family. So, exactly. so what? Uh, I don't know if it's true. It's kind of like. Uh, I fish with Daddy at night. You farm with him during the day, and that's what really gave him such a heart. He didn't live to be as old as he should have been. Yeah, you know? okay. You know, um, our father uh, passed away uh, at uh, 46 years 47, old. 47. I think 46, 46, 47 47 years old. Yeah, you know? working hard. You know, but uh, but, but he, he loved farming. Though. He wanted to get into that farming, didn't he? Daddy did. He you know? he loved to work. Yeah, you know, just like we all do. But uh, um, we've we've learned in the past few years to. Uh, Take it easy every once in a while and, and don't don't just overdo. Calm down. That's calm the down. Just calm, calm down. down. That's what we're saying. Take you know? it easy just a little calm bit. Calm down. Yeah. Um, but Daddy's farming days. I mean, he. I remember like as well as you do. Um, cherry farm. Cherry. Cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. Cantaloupe. Watermelon. Yep. Uh, strawberries. Yep. And we had our own little little family farm. Little oh, yeah. family acreage on family, back, oh, yeah. back back five. Okra. okra beans and yeah. everything and. Do, uh, Carol would do, and when I was in elementary school, I don't know if I ever told you that, uh, the bus would let me off at the farm. Thank you, Tom. And uh, uh, I'd run a spray machine. Uh, with, uh, my first my first job as a, a elementary school kid, uh, probably 10 years old, uh, was pulling nut grass. Now, where's the farm at? Where's the farm That's at? off of uh, Morton Grove, in Morton Grove, off of Terry Street. And it's called Mike's now, right? Yep, Mike's u -Pit. And That's Daddy started said. that. It was MWG Farms. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the M was for Benny Moss. M Ooh. was for Moss. Yeah, Moss. Right. Benny Moss. G was for Junior Glidden. Junior Glidden. Glidden. And Franklin Wicks. Yep. So we actually started Mike's u -Pit. I remember that. Oh, exactly. I remember that. And, and, and I remember one time... <laughs> Let's see here. One time I remember Daddy had a spray machine that was straddled the, the things, and the steering broke down, right? Yep. 
And being told the story about that, <laughs> being a true commercial fisherman, not a farmer, but a fisherman trying to farm. <laughs> they had a, a, the steering box broke down on it, and it wouldn't steer to the right, it wouldn't steer to the left. So there was an old van that they used for storage on the farm. There was an old Chevy van, and it had a steering box in it that looked kind of close to it. So they took it out of, of the van, and they took it up there, and they bolt some of the bolts back in and they welded some of the pieces back together and and uh, they took off on the spray machine hey this is going to be great steer to the left they went to the right right in the ditch <laughs> <laughs> so they had to try to and then them. and they 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 everybody that got on that spray machine uh, would just put it right in the ditch it, or they would run over tomatoes they would run over the crop and they were just destroying everything with that spray machine um, so that guess they frankly got the great idea that you're calling hey, let's uh, really daddy got the great idea to say uh, Hey, let's get Johnny to drive it. Johnny never drove a car before. He doesn't know which way's left oh, or which way's right. Right before you drive it. Yeah, okay, that exactly. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So you so learned I to drive. So I got on there. I learned to drive backwards. Yeah. Backwards. Yeah. Yeah. Good. It worked out really good <laughs> for him. For him. Yeah. <laughs> Until oh, I got my first car. <laughs> drive it straight. Yo. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I had a little trouble with that. Oh man, uh, man. <laughs> but yeah, that, that I remember. It now I loved. Uh, I know, as you well know, I fish more with Daddy than most of the guys you tell me. We have, um, we have more time on oyster bars too. Well, that's, that's another story. Um, but um, let's see here. There's um, there would be from my dad's first marriage, would be um, would be Liz, right. Lewis, me. Um, then there would be Debbie, Lisa, and Robin. And Robin. And Robin. There were six of us. And then Daddy had you, know, Daddy and Carol, my ste our stepmother, your mother had right. you. Mm -hmm. And of course, Robbie is another story. Right. Well, Robbie Weeks, you know, we grew up as brothers. Yeah, we did. We all grew up as brothers. And it's so funny with the pioneers back in them days, guys. Um, uncle Larry, our, our uncle, was arrested and thrown in prison for cattle wrestling. And back in them days, they would hop the fence and grab the cattle and, and wrestle it and and try to feed the families or whatnot or sell it. So he got went for, thrown in prison for that, and he was living down at Week's Fish Camp with Carol, his mom, before you were born. Mm -hmm. Carol was there raising you, and right. Daddy felt bad. That Daddy wasn't was, raising me. No, raising Robbie. Raising Robbie. And, and Daddy felt bad because Carol was trying to raise you, so he hired Carol, raise his Robbie. mother, to hang nets. And that's when you buy, back in the day in commercial fishing, you would have these nets that have a cork line to them and a lead line and the webbing in the middle that the fish would get tangled up called entanglement nets. And you couldn't afford new cork line and rope with corks on it, or you couldn't afford new lead line, but you can afford the webbing in the middle. And Carol was real good at hanging that in. And lo and behold, she had divorced Larry while he was in prison, mm -hmm. and they fell in love. And my dad died married to your mother, mm -hmm. which really made Robbie our brother, but he's like a right. cousin. Cousin brother. Cousin brother. I like that. <laughs> but. Um, that's that's one of the weak stuff that. But um, still, we we all grew up as brothers. We all definitely yeah. always been brothers. Me and Robbie. We fought as history. brothers. We laughed as brothers. We yeah. we lived we off of Pendleton Street. Yeah. Pendleton Street. Pendleton Street here. <coughs> and back then, that's when wrestling was real famous. And I see on Facebook like if you remember Dusty Rose with a bionic elbow, you had a good life. Well, we had a good life. Yeah. We we'd watch wrestling every night. Yeah. Or when it came on the weekends, I guess. Yeah. And then we'd go out the dirt road and want to wrestle. We'd draw a pin oh, in the yeah. thing and do that kind of stuff. My best, my funny, the funniest thing I ever remember is you guys wrestling outside to decide who was going to get to watch what channel on TV. Oh, that's crazy. And you guys would go outside and you would wrestle to see who was going to. By the time you guys got done wrestling, you, watching, you watched your show. I watched the whole show you and your show was already over. <laughs> but you know what? We had more fun. Yeah, we had more fun, okay? Well, I got to watch Flipper. <laughs> you got to watch Flipper. We had more fun. Oh, shit. But um, let's see, that was early in life. Uh, Daddy fished off of Pendleton when he was there. He was commercial fisherman his whole life and then did a little bit of farming at the end. Uh, fished out of Kelly's Fish House and we ran what they call big boat fishing there. But locally, we uh, ran mullet skiffs and we would keep our boat down at Hickory Bridge in town at the, underneath the bridge. We would have two boats tied up there, mm -hmm. and one of them were named after you, a mullet skiff called the John John. Yep. A little 20-footer little with a kicker in it, mullet skiff. Uh, there's still some there are people still, uh, Clifford's daughter, and um, I guess 
Tammy and a few other people still call me John John. Yeah, yeah. They, they all know me as they all know me as John yeah, John. Yeah, yeah, that was your name, John John. John. Yeah, that's right. We lived at Coconut at the time, Weeks Fish Camp, and um, had my oldest sister was born Liz, and they'd go to Naples Hospital, and they had Liz, and then a year later, Lewis was was born, and they dropped Liz off at Grandma, Mamie Weeks' house to be born in uh, to to watch Liz while Lewis was being born, and then. And a year later, we had my mother had six kids, one year after the other. A year later, I was I was to come, and they dropped my older sister Liz and Lewis off at Grandma's, and they gave Grandma the opportunity to name me because she'd been watching the television. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but uh, she named me Jimmy Lee Weeks, J I M M Y L E E Weeks, and to this day, I have a problem with people putting James on stuff and putting James on this and assuming it's James. Even my high school diploma has James on it. Jim Lee. Jim Lee. So I really went to school in Fort Myers right. because my mom had custody, but I would catch Greyhound bus and and I would um, I would get dropped off at the house. And uh, Don, Uncle Donald Ray Smith, who was married to Betty Lou at the time, one of our aunts, he owns, his dad started Smith's Garage in Benita. Yeah, it's no longer there, but a lot of history on all the repairs and stuff that they did there. When the dog track first got started, the welder actually welded a lot of the benches and stuff from the dog track at Smith's Garage. But there was a time that the bus would only stop at Smith's Garage and not where we lived. So I would have to try to call and whatnot. Well, one time I didn't have a dime to call, and Uncle Donald Ray showed me, he said, no, if this ever happens again, I'm gonna take this little metal can where you hide keys at, put underneath my workbench outside, and you will be able to grab that dime out of there and call your parents to come pick you up. I'll never forget that. Oh, yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, but Donald Ray did that. Yep. Story is that Granddaddy bought the fish camp in 1934 when he bought 32 acres, 25 acres for what it was. They, he, there was any amount at the end of the week's fish camp and they built a little hutch at the, on top of any amount in uh, 1934 and uh, had the three kids and then later on in the, um, in, uh, I guess, in the 50s or so, they got two army barracks that they moved from North Fort Myers, put together and called, built what they called the big house. How'd they, uh, how'd they get the army barracks down here? Old semis, old diesel semis. Really? Yeah, old diesel semis. It wasn't that far back. Yeah, it was in the 50s or so. Now, mm -hmm. I see that I heard a different story yeah. that they came in on a barge. Oh, I they brought them down on the barge. Oh, it, was a, oh, it was a semi, but you could be right. Could, uh, they brought him right in the camera. Yeah, on the and we got to call our aunts and uncles, see who's going to argue with exactly. them. Exactly. Right? <laughs> but Weeks Fish Camp uh, <coughs> actually opened to the public. It was really, it's known as a family fishing camp. It wasn't a charter fishing camp. It wasn't a rent cabins go fishing. There was commercial fishing camp. When you went down and you know that Weeks family lived there, aunts and uncles on two different roads, Mandy Street and Drain Street, and they had a bunch of kids, and we fished out of there commercially. In 42, he opened to the public. And it stayed open to public all the way up to 2014. Something like it that. Was over 70 some years. Yeah. Over 70 some years. But that the history of that is so entwined, and so many people have gone out and, and enjoyed it and everything else. That's why it's so important to keep that that access there for us. Yeah, definitely. Great. I mean, the water quality right now yeah. is is probably the worst it's ever been. But hopefully, some people down in Tallahassee will take care of that and and maybe turn this around and. Stay and make it on top of it, and <clears throat> maybe we'll get our uh, estuaries back and get our fish back, and uh, actually be able to go out there and commercial fish. And I thought about that, Johnny, because it's not only for the tourists; it's not only for the people to go fishing. There are still a few people trying to make a living on the waters. Exactly. Down there. We got a crab that delivers crab to me twice a week. Yeah. We got people throwing cast nets trying to make a living. So that there's it, there's so many people. That's one of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. so many people that use that waterway and, and try to make a living from it, and it benefits the whole public. It benefits everybody. Yeah. I mean, it means so much. A granddaddy. I remember the story mm -hmm. is that he went through the, the depression like everyone else's age, and he said, you know what? Don't ever sell this property because if we have another Great Depression, we can catch fish and feed our family. Exactly. But our aunt and uncles couldn't agree to keep it in the family. Right. Something's out of our control. Commercial fishing in Benita. My knowledge of where it started, it really started on Benita Beach Road, if you ask me, right? There was an old fish house on Benita Beach Road called, uh, it's FGCU's there now. They have a campus yeah. there at the foot of the bridge. And commercially, there was a fish house there. Dixie rings a bell. That's an old time fish house in the area that's gone from here to Naples to Pine Island. But Dixie Fish Company. Dixie Fish Company, correct. Yeah. 
Uh, but commercial fishing started in here, I would say in the 50s more say, was a heyday because 1960 Hurricane Donna hit and that really wiped out the shelling because it was really known for shelling and it's actually the shell factor started in Bonita. But in the 50s there was commercial fishing and they were commercial fish back in the days, they didn't have much motors or, or power boats or engines, so they had a mother boat that was like a, what you call a cabin cruiser nowadays. And they would tie pole skiffs behind it, three, four mullet skiffs mm -hmm. to go pull it. And the commercial fishermen would go out in the middle of the bay, close enough to where they were going to fish, and they would just untie and pull to catch their fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Daddy was doing it in the um, 50s, I guess it was, mm -hmm. about the Mount Key story. You remember you heard about mm -hmm. the Mount Key story? Way before I was born. Yeah, but did you remember the story about Mount Key? A lot of history of Mount Key as far as the Indians used to live there and stuff like that. And and a ghost on there and everything else that still goes back to this day. What well, there is uh, at the end of any commercial fishing net, excuse me, you'd have a lick go. And most people used the old window weights from single hung windows in houses because you can tie a net to that, throw it in the woods your net would go would start running out and you have to jerk it out and this won't get hung up like an anchor because it comes out straight well you know daddy pulled up to old mount key heard a bunch of fish there threw the net in the woods pulled around it made a half circle came to the other side and then scared the fish up started roping the net back in the boat you we call roping it you put the net back in your boat with the fish and everything so you can get out in the middle of the bay and have a breeze and not have the bugs eat you we got back to the other in the net of mount key daddy said Went to jerk the lick go out and it jerked back. He said, Well, it must be hung up on a branch or something. Went to jerk it real hard and it jerked back. It took about five yards of net and growled at it. Well, I come back and get this at daylight. So he cut it right cut there. Cut it right there. <laughs> back at that at daylight. <laughs> that was Daddy's Mountain Key story on commercial fishing. The Astero Bay, the staple fish in Astero Bay, Southwest Florida, always been mullet. You'd catch summertime mullet, you'd catch real mullet. You could also catch in the Stirrup Bay around the oyster bars, sheephead like we do now with our cast. Sheephead, sheephead, sheephead sand, sand brim, and mullet, of course, and mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. But there was a day when the bay flushed a lot better than it used to. New Pass has changed so much in my lifetime, I could tell you the different ways that it's changed someday. But it would flush so good, we had a lot of grass in the bay. And you remember old Jimmy Johnson, down at Weeks Fish Camp mm -hmm. Granddaddy, would go trout fishing in the bay, hang little cane poles outside the boat, four or five on each side. Yep. And you go trout fishing. You could catch a bunch of trout and stuff. I've been trout fishing. There. Been trout yeah. fishing there. The but uh, pretty much that's, that's what we Don't did. A lot of that was mullet, trout, sand brim, sheephead. I can't think of much of anything else. Uh, mango, any, any mango, do any mango snapper? No, I've had very few. Very few. Everybody's heard the story about Weeks Fish Camp. Try to keep it open to the public and uh, and uh, public access and all that. Well, the Johnsons would had a compound on the left side, on the south side of Coconut Road, at the foot of the Hyatt where the water park is now. That was the Johnsons Fish Camp, and yep. they really fished a fish house at the end that the Pelican Landing owns yep. now. Weeks Fish Camp was on the north side. There was a one time when people kept bothering Granddaddy to sell the property even back then. Mm -hmm. He would get so mad at him, he said, you know what, I want to line all the weeks is up down the road. And when you get through them, we'll put the Johnsons right behind them. Just get the hell out of our lives. We don't yeah. want to sell. <laughs> you know, he didn't want to sell. And um, then there was the Gants. And Daddy was always looked like the Albert Gant. I couldn't figure out why. Albert Gant's an old time fisherman. Dad fished a boat called the Gunsmoke. He's the age of our father. And um, what the story is, is Daddy's uncle was Charlie Weeks who was the guy that started the, the uh, buildings at the end of uh, Hickory Creek with the mm -hmm. shack and all that on there. And Albert Gant was the son. He was a, wasn't he the first person to ever build a house on, uh, it was a Fort Myers Beach? No, Benita it was Hickory. Beach. It's Hickory. Uh, Hickory, Hickory Beach. Pass, Benita Hickory. Beach, North End. And that's how Daddy knew Albert, was because mm -hmm. his uncle raised Albert Gant. Right. And then two look identical. Did they? Identical did they? Like I didn't it. know that. I did that. Then, so you got, you got the Johnsons would be the number one family we grew up fishing with. Then I'm thinking of the Gants. Uh, we heard of the Hogs. Um, there's the Hamiltons. My dad, he could tell you, Johnny could tell you that there was a guy named Henry Hamilton that fished more with my dad than anybody. And his son is still in town. His son yeah. is uh, Hank, Hank, Hank Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah. I want to get some stories from him about my father fishing in, in the area. What yeah. do you remember about that? Well, I was so small, so little at the time that I, I can't even picture what he looked like. And I don't, yeah. But, they, don't, but Daddy fished with him long. I do anybody. remember the name and knew that he was always at the house. He was always at the house. Always at the house. house. Yep. He was there. He was there to go fishing. He was there after 
I guess he'd park the car there, hop in the truck, and, and then go to the boat, and then drop him back off there. And he didn't have a very good reputation, but we understand he was kind of a rowdy reputation, or people thought that he was kind of a little bit of, I don't know. I didn't of course, have a our father didn't have a new reputation. <laughs> he didn't either, either, right? <laughs> yeah, well, the dome had a lot to do with that. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, uh, the history of the dome. I don't know if you've ever recorded the way that me and you know the dome. The dome. We live the in the Knife site. and Gun Club. Knife and Gun Club. And why do <laughs> they call it that? <laughs> you they call me. it that because when you walk up there, if they ask you at the door, you got a knife or a gun. If you don't, they issue you one. They issue you. go <laughs> right in there and join the crowd. There <laughs> you go. That's how you do it. Oh, my gosh. Knife and Gun Club. There used to be three beers for a dollar. And there were drop beers, and they have the dome wooden nickels. I came across a couple recently. I've got them in the back. But they're dome wooden nickels. Um, the Fisher Folk of Charlotte Harbor is a book. And it's more based on the northern area of Lee County. And uh, you would have the famous name of Bud Fernandez and all of them that was fishing. And that's about the time, and I would say that would be the 40s, because Daddy had been a kid or so, mm -hmm. 40s or 30s like that, with the Fernandez. That's the story. Yeah, yeah that, 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 the yeah. timelines. I try to get the timelines yeah. right. I couldn't do it. But that would be mostly people of Charlotte Harbor. And, and the book of the Fisher Folk of Charlotte Harbor really covers that real well. In fact, Grandma was in that. They, she was asked to be a part of that as well. Daddy was not that far removed from the pioneers. We know that. You know, right. People talk about pioneers so mm -hmm. far. Really down here in southwest Florida, the, the roads weren't very accessible in the 40s and 50s. So right. they didn't have much law, nothing like that. Right. And Daddy remembers some days. And when he got in the farming, there was some equipment over to him. And I went with Daddy into Naples to get the equipment with a bunch of other local people, not to mention names like mm -hmm. Lawhorns or whatever, or Thought Trees or whatever, packing mm -hmm. weapons to get the equipment. Oh, yeah? Yeah, in the 70s. I was, I was a kid, I thought, yeah. that's pretty weird, you know, that these, these, these guys had the pioneer in them that you didn't lie to them. I mean, handshakes yeah, is, is your deal. Okay. I remember a guy coming to buy a bunch of cherry tomatoes from Daddy one time and want to cut him a check. I mean, what Daddy, what Daddy told him. Don't take no check. Yeah. Go back down and give him briefcase cash. Yep. And that's what he yeah. did. You know? But <laughs> but that's what the, what the daddy our generation don't have it in as much as he did, but they, they remember the pioneer ways. Oh yeah. yeah. They definitely lived the pioneer way. And the hard working, the hard working way. That's how horse weeks people want to know where's the horse come from. That was great grandfather Rigdon Weeks nickname for working hard as a horse. Yeah. And you got two people that, that might work hard and that would be your people making a living on farming and people making a living on the water. That's, that's your hard workers, you know. I mean, they like to say, I like to say the pioneers pushed back the mangroves, fought off the mosquitoes, and rode out the hurricanes to settle this place. And we don't want to be forgotten. I don't want to be forgotten. I heard a story. Do you remember anything about the, during the hurricane, right after hurricane down and when the water came up and got so deep, Franklin, our dad, jumped in his boat and drove all the way up. Spring Creek Road. Spring Creek, all the way up. Yep. Coconut Road, yep. all the way up to Spring Creek, check on everybody else, and, and come back. Yep. And came back in yep. his boat. Yep, that was Daddy. Yep, yeah. that was Tom guys. They used to sink their boats and take the motors off and sink of them and tie them to branches so they wouldn't move around so much. Right. But that's a lot of stuff. But, but the Weeks family entwined in here. You got the Smiths family that was married to the family with the garage. You you got Daddy farming and fishing. You got uh, so much other things that uh, I, I can't even think of. Uh, the Gant family. I mean. There's the Skinner families tied in with us, you know, oh, Ricky yeah. Weeks Skinner, and all that yeah. stuff. Uh, just, just such, such a lineage there that uh, it's important to us to remember it. You know? yeah. And that's one great thing you got this fish market here, and, and I really like what you've done to the well, uh, to the fish market here is in putting uh, re preserving the history on the walls and stuff, and everybody that comes in here can look at the different families and each each category of families on the wall of and old pictures and stuff. Of uh, the way it was back in the day. When I yeah, when I decided to do this and felt like doing it, I you know I did two foot by four foot sections and offered right. the pioneer families to put their stuff up there. The Hogue has done it, the Johnson has done it with weeks of course, and I got other stuff that gets dropped off every day. You see every mm -hmm. time I get different stuff yep. dropped off because people know I share it. I want to put it right. out there and show it to people. And I wanted to think of we never had we've been commercial fishermen wholesalers our whole life. Mm -hmm. Now we open up a retail market thanks to Clifford. Right. Cousin Clifford Weeks. I mean, he's he's yeah. a throwback of the pioneers. Our that he is. He, that, he is something. But I wanted to do a, a, a theme, and, and I got it on the wall up here, Johnny. And I think when you thought about it, sharing history. We're, sharing we're weeks history. seafood, weeks fish market, sharing history. We're not only selling fish, we're selling history, and and that means a lot to me because I really enjoy that. You know. All right, you ready? Go ahead, Johnny. I love you, brother. Hey.
we got something here we started and you're yeah. part of it me you ricky and no family and and we love sharing it with the public we want to keep sharing the public but once again i want to reiterate i want to all the pioneer families to feel free to come here and talk to me and let's get their history out there let's try to save as much as this history can somehow some way i know it's possible and that's my goal and we, we've started something here yeah. and i'm glad you're a part of it, it thank you to me. Uh, it means it means a lot to me to be here even though you're a little brother don't listen to me yeah <laughs> <laughs> thanks everyone thank you yep